Anyway, uh, let's continue here. Let's go to some next news. What else do we have here to talk about? So, uh, trainer news. Casablanca New Balance. So, um, I'm sure some of you might be aware of them because I just have only got hip to them now at the moment. But Casablanca are this new brand. I think they're I think they're only maybe a couple of three years old or something along those kind of lines. And um, I was doing a bit of digging. I found out that the actual founder of Casablanca is actually one of the people that was involved with Le Pom Pom back in the day. If you guys remember, do you remember Le Pom Pom? It was this uh, really chic uh, nightclub in Paris that opened up. I'm not sure if it's still around. Uh, I remember um, Andre designed the logo for it, which was really, really cool. I think it was a guy with a hat walking and stuff. Le Pompon, Paris, right? Let's see if I can find it here. It was a really cool uh, nightclub. I'm not sure if it's still about. It probably is still about, right? It's a, I'm not sure if... But I remember at the time, I think all the Pigal crew were involved in it. And one of the, one of the Pigal founders um, has now started off this new brand called... Uh, this new brand called uh, Casablanca. So this is Le Pom Pom. I remember this was during the times of, you know, the heady eras of like, what was that New York club that was, was it Max's and all that stuff? Like everyone had like their little kind of local hipster bar that everyone was kind of uh, associated with the scene would kind of go to. And it was kind of the, the requisite place to go to during Paris Fashion Week after parties. Um, I went there a couple of times too. Um, this is also during the Teddy times of Alibi here in London and a few others around so these are kind of this was the kind of bar you know that was, that was focused in again a really amazing place um very well done uh very expertly put together i think i sent them a mix back in the day too of wanting to play there this is obviously a, a picture of yoon ambush and stuff uh djing there there's the guy from pigal one of the and one of the co-founders of uh casablanca there on the right um and of course just an amazing you know, they really had cool graphics. I like their flyers that they put together. Just a really artfully and technically done brand. Uh, or bar, sorry, for a better term. So this same guy that ran this brand has now got his own brand called Casablanca. And he's putting together this amazing New Balance that debuted, I think, during the Paris Fashion Week just passed. Um, and yeah, they look they look great. They remind me a little bit of the Lanvin Runners, right? That came out a while, that have been out for a while. I'm not sure if you guys have seen them, but these Lanvin running shoes... They kind of remind me a little bit of that. I've seen a lot of people during Paris Fashion Week wearing them. I've seen them a lot featured in streetwear style pictures as well. And just generally, you know, they've been a bit of a fan favorite. It seems like um, these shoes here I've got on the screen. They're the Lanva green running sneakers. Um, low top panel technical satin suede sneakers in light green. Round toe lace up, blah, blah. Um, you can see them here. They've got like a kind of a, an old Nike runner sort of feel, right? Like a waffle racer sort of vibe, a bit more of a chunky sole. They've obviously been uh, aged uh, on purpose, pre dyed. They've got some stains on the laces. They've kind of dyed the midsole a little bit. Just in general, just a very, very nice shoe. And for about, what, let's, what's that, $400 or something? £400. Pounds. It's at $590 in pounds. It'd be pretty cheap. It's a really, really uh, great sneaker, I think. Let me see how much that will be actually in the United Kingdom. Um, it's actually quite a good value for a fairly well made sneaker that could look good wearing a suit. It's going to look good wearing, you know, some track pants. Um, yeah, it's a very, very versatile trainer. I'm, I'm, I'm a real big fan of it. Let's see if I can get it up on here. Let's see how much it's you know, price of it. Yeah, so 425 for that shoe, which is far less than what you'd pay for like a Balenciaga. And I'd say it's probably the same level, if not a bit better. The Balenciaga maybe has a little bit less of a... It's probably a little bit less versatile than this trainer, right? You can, there's only so much wears or so many way, so many ways you can wear a Balenciaga Triple S or the kind of, you know, the sock racer. Whereas this, I feel like you can, like I said, mention it before. You can wear it with some light linen trousers, some suit trousers, some tailored trousers, some baggy trousers, some pants, um, some track pants, of course. I feel it will look really good. Skinny jeans, whatever you want, right? You can obviously wear it with that. So... Uh, that's obviously a good trainer, but I'm a real big fan of this Casablanca that they've done. It's a New Balance 327, which I'm not too familiar with the model, but I like the shape. I love the over application of it. I like the fact that the toe box, although it's pointy and a bit narrow for my big wide foot, it does look like it might have a bit more whip to it than other shoes do. And just in general, it just looks like a very, very well made, put together uh, collaboration. Um, I would probably lead, I'll probably lean against um, getting the green pair as opposed to the orange pair. I think the green pair is a little bit more of a classic uh kind of um 80s 70s runner sort of feel to it but again i wouldn't be hard pressed to get either to be honest either either colorway i'd be so happy to have a pair um so the following so casablanca new balance 327 gets the official look this is from hypebeast says after making this debut at paris fashion week and featuring in the labels uh spring summer uh 20 campaign the casablanca 327 
New Balance, sorry, now receives an official imagery. The Sharif Tajir led label, that's his name, right? Shaf, Sha, no, how do you say it? Sharaf, Sharaf Tajir, the Sharaf Tajir label is the first brand to collaborate on the new silhouette. Oh, it's a new silhouette? Okay, it's not retro, which takes cues from the New Balance's archive of running sneakers from the 1970s. Releasing in two colorways, orange and green, the Casablanca collaboration is inspired by Tajir's dual French and Moroccan heritage, with colors inspired by Moroccan's oranges and tennis uniforms, and the brightly colored detailing sets alongside a white upper inspired by the 70s Italian sports car as well as a suede vamp fans and an enlarged leather N on the side walls. Speaking about the collaboration, Tajir explained, the design perfectly matches the aesthetic of Casablanca. It's the ultimate leisure shoe. It's an honor to the partner uh, with uh, New Balance on this exciting new style as a Casablanca's first design collaboration. I know the brand works with few fashion companies, so to be chosen to do this as a new silhouette is so special and unique for me, definitely. Yeah, it's true, actually. They don't do a lot of fashion collaborations, do they, um, uh, New Balance? They also do some stuff with Junior. He's done some collaborations with them. They've done some stuff with, um, is it Engineered Garments? But they're not really runway stuff. I can't think of many, in it. Margaret Howe maybe has done a New Balance before. Yeah, they don't do many. Yeah, true. I wonder why that is. They could easily do them. I'm sure a lot of brands would want to do them too, but maybe the minimums are t are a bit high for up and coming brands, which is why people tend to go for under no un well less uh less sexy brands like Asics and stuff, right? Try and make those cool, maybe Dior and stuff like that. But I'm a big fan of this man. I think it looks fucking beautiful. The imagery as well is really nice. It's got got this um idealist sort of imagery with their shoes back to back like this. Look great. Again, the side profile is banging. I like the fact that they've got this kind of PU mid mid sewy kind of thing with the two different components here. One bit is a little bit uh, dyed off white than the other bit on the midsole here. I'm not sure if it's different materials. I'm assuming they are. Maybe it's the deal with how they're gonna. Maybe it's a in the inclusion in terms of the heel comfortability. I'm not too sure, but I quite like them. Oh, the sides. I thought the sides were mesh. They're not. It's like a perfect level. Okay, fair enough. I thought it was like a mesh. That would have been pretty cool to have like a mesh on the side, but it's more of a perforated leather with the massive um, enlarged end on the side. You got these nice gold uh, lace tips as well. Uh, the laces look a little bit more thicker than what I would be with what you may be used to to a New Balance. And again, just a very classic shoe, man. Like I love them. I'm a really big fan of them. Again, I won't be too fussed about getting either colorway, but I'd probably opt to go for the green. I quite like the green aesthetic. It looks really, really beautiful. And again, just a very, very well done collaboration. So let's continue here with the information. Uh, take a look at the silhouette. Um, expected to release globally via the New Balance web store. Okay, April, April, sorry, April 4th. So it doesn't look like they're going to do anything special for the release. Maybe they'll be released online to at Casablanca's web store. That would be pretty, um, that would make, that'd make more sense, wouldn't it? But it looks like for the most part, you're going to be able to get them from the New Balance online store. Maybe some a few other retailers might spark them. And again, maybe they weren't too aware of how popular they'd be. They thought it'd just be like a little release they put out. But it's cool to see them doing this. Um, I'm a big fan of collaborations done. And again, I like the fact that there's no end on the instep. That's quite cool. I'm a big fan of the of the collaboration where the brand, where the you know the shoe brand goes to the other fashion company and says, "Hey, we got this new silhouette we want to put out. Do what you want with it, and then we're gonna release it as the first ever one." I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think the retro thing of it is a bit dead. It's a bit meh. But I think if you can try and introduce a new model with a brand that makes sense for that model to a new audience and get that kind of crossover appeal and be able to attract two audiences, the quote unquote sneakheads anyway, that are going to buy it regards because they're fans of New Balance. And you also got the ability to grab a hold of some of the brand, some of the brands, some of that fashion brands are consumer base and in general, some of the fashion fans in general and bring them on that journey. I think it's a really, really cool idea. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a really, really big fan of it. Um, again, some cool imagery here. Obviously, you got the oranges and shit um, there with the imagery of a person sitting down, some nice trousers here with an amazing little uh, panel on the side there as well. Look at linen trousers or silk. Again, um, very a very luxurious shoe for a company that's not very known. That's that's a thing that's very well done about it. For a company that's not very well known for luxury, like you don't really think of, you don't really think of New Balance. New Balance, you maybe think of it being, um, you may think of it being, uh, how do you call it, um, functional, right? But you don't necessarily think of New Balance being luxurious or exquisite, right, or refined. You just think of it being like functional. Right, a practical, functional shoe that does does what it says on the tin. Right, it just gets the job done. If you want to wear it in a pair of royal denims, you can. You want to wear it with some combats, you can. You want to wear it with some chinos, you can. Like it does what it says on the tin. It just is. It's a shoe. 
but this is the first time they've kind of been able to elevate it without again this is the clever part of this collaboration it's been elevated and made to feel luxe without the inclusion of python or snake skin or you know exotic you know python hair uppers or weird colorways just by a really classic i think someone mentioned it previously who was it i think there's a really good interview with daniel day lewis actually and he mentioned how um when he was doing the oh what's the movie called when he's uh he's a fashion designer the one where i think that, that was a movie that was maybe the last one he did actually wasn't it the last movie he actually did was that fashion designer one um he did this movie anyway where he's, he's, he basically plays this fictional fashion designer that's based on uh, a designer called Charles James, I think, right? Charles James, um, a very well-known American um, old-school designer from back in the day, very um, extravagant and over-the-top and all that stuff. And it was just... And he tried to... Basically, he had to learn to sew because Daniel Lewis, if you know anything about his characters that he plays in movies, when he plays them, he doesn't just play them via the script. He embodies the entire character, right? Um, if he's going to play a cobbler, he'd go and learn how to actually make shoes. If he's going to go play somebody that, you know, works on an oil field or land... I mean, he'd go and actually... Um, read interviews or biographies of people that worked in the industry and actually go and do that job so he did the same thing with fashion learn to sew and then he i think he picked up a balenciaga dress or something a very famous dress from balenciaga and he tried to remake it just by uh, the picture because he couldn't get a hold of the actual um, archive item because it was in i think it was in a i think it was in a museum somewhere in paris and they wouldn't obviously send it to him so he had to just remake this whole outfit or this whole dress just from pictures that he found online and he was able to do it but i think what he realized straight away was that the dress from the naked eye looks very simple and very easy to do, right? The patterns don't look that complex, but the moment you start digging into it, you start to find these complexities into it. And in complexities, complex, yeah, complexities, yeah? you should have said complex elements are testing with this dress, right? And you remember he mentioned something along the lines of like, oh, he, he realized that to make something look simple, to make something look, you know, simple is actually the height of, 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 uh, is the height of that level of craft, right? That's where you're really operating at a high level. You made it look really easy, but it's not easy. Um, and I think that's what New Balance have done with this trainer. They've made something that looks very luxurious, very high-end, without doing all the common high-end things that people do when they want to make stuff luxurious. And yeah, I'm a big fan of it. E eager to see what we're going to see next time coming around with the collaborations. I think if they are trying, or maybe this is going to be their fashion-based their fashion -based model. We're interested to see what other brands do with it, how they take it. You know, uh, maybe some Japanese brands might take it upon themselves. Maybe you might see a John Lu, uh, no, sorry, a Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Anderson do something similar with this too. That'd be pretty cool with this whole model. Again, I think it's very versatile. It can work for a few brands, or quite a lot of brands, sorry. And we get to see what people do with it. So again, um, release date is set for April 4th, I think. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for these on the New Balance web store when they drop. Yeah, very, 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 very good sneaker, man. I'm a big, big fan of it. Looks fucking beautiful.